Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about the loaded gain of a common uh, collector configuration. So, where both the source resistance and load resistance are present, then how does the gain expression for gain uh, change for a common collector configuration? So, just to recall, uh, we said that if the unloaded gain of a common collector configuration for two cases, first we analyze for lambda equal to zero or r not equal to infinity case, and we said that the unloaded gain, if I apply a voltage Vs here the output voltage was exactly equal to Vs. Okay? So, because for an unloaded gain, the emitter current was forced to be 0. If the emitter current is 0, base current is also 0 okay? and collector current is also 0, which means your base to emitter voltage is 0, which in turn forces the output voltage to be equal to the input voltage. So, the output voltage, the emitter voltage follows the base voltage or the input voltage. So, therefore, it is called the emitter follower. Now, we will have to analyze this circuit in the presence of uh, load resistance again uh, sorry I just forgot a point so what happens when you have a finite or not so when you have a finite or not so there is a path for the current so you have to consider that that you can treat r not like a load resistor and there is some path for the current so the gain will be slightly less than one your output voltage will not exactly follow the input voltage so this is v naught and v s and we said that one intuitive way there are different ways of analyzing this we said that we can do a Thevenin representation of this circuit looking into the emitter and by that the Thevenin equivalent will actually be the open circuit voltage. If I open this you get V naught equal to V s and the Thevenin resistance was actually R e small R e which is actually alpha by gm. This was slightly smaller than the value uh, you know compared to its mass counterpart and we got a resistance R naught and the gain we said is R naught by R naught plus small r. This was the gain and this was slightly less than 1. Okay, And this is the gain for an unloaded MOSFET of unloaded uh, common collector configuration with a finite R naught. Now we will see what happens when you start loading the common collector configuration. So this common collector configuration gain now starts to depend upon both the load resistance and the source resistance. Okay, So, I will try to derive two to three different expressions for the gain, the voltage gain, <laughs> but all these expressions will make complete sense, you know that is that's what we are trying to uh, achieve here. So, first I will assume that lambda equal to 0 or R naught, I am sorry, I am just using the word lambda here, this is a BJT. For a BJT, when I say R naught is infinity, R naught is infinity, the early voltage is infinity, so that is what it means. Okay, Lambda equal to 0, I am referring to the MOSFET. Here for a BJT, R naught equal to infinity would means uh, would mean uh, V A is the early voltage is infinity. Okay, so so when I consider the case when R naught equals infinity, okay, you can just uh, probably correct the previous videos as well. I had accidentally said lambda equal to zero. What I meant is lambda is something we associate with channel length modulation parameter for a MOSFET. Uh, v A is the early voltage. I probably uh, I just slipped and then probably said this as lambda it is actually early voltage Va. For a BJT, the early voltage is what we talk about when we talk of R0. So, the source voltage, I mean sorry, the input source is now applied after before this, there is actually a source resistance associated with the source uh, in voltage. Okay. So, now to solve this problem, we will approach, we will we'll take different uh, routes for it. So, the first one, if I can somehow find the current flowing into the gate, into the base, that will be your base current. Then since R0 is infinity, the current flowing here will simply be the emitter current beta times beta plus 1 times IB and then I will have to just you know multiply the current into the resistance RL, I will get the voltage. So how do I find the current IB? You just need to know the input resistance. So for the time being, I will call it R in as the input resistance. That is the input resistance seen here. And in the last class, we saw how to derive that input resistance and that turns out to be small RE plus RL. This is the total resistance in the emitter terminal times beta plus 1. When R0 is infinity, this is the expression for Rn. So, you will get the voltage, the current IB is actually given by Vs by Rs plus Rn. And so, the voltage V0 is simply IE times RL. So, which will simply be beta plus 1 into RL by Rs plus Rn. Okay. So now if you look at this expression, I can further simplify this. So if you see this here, this is nothing but R in minus R pi, R into beta plus 1 is R pi will be 
R L into beta plus one. So I can write this expression, the output voltage. So this there is a V I factor here, V S factor here. Okay, I've missed it. So if I substitute this value R N minus R pi for R L into beta plus one, I'll get R N minus R pi divided by R S plus R N. So now if you see, I have an expression which is only in terms of R N and R S. I mean, of course, R pi is a B J T parameter. Now this R N captures the effect of the load resistance R L. So this is the expression for the gain, okay, of a common collector configuration in terms of R N. Now R N we know is a function of R L. So that's where the in fact the gain does depend upon both R N and R S. Okay, I'm showing this expression in terms of R N here. Again, I can say that the gain A V is less than one. Right? You can we can very obviously see that. It's actually R n minus some value by R n plus some value, okay. So therefore, it is less than one. And if R n is infinity, then this result will approach one. Okay, that will happen either when beta is infinity or when uh, R l is infinity. So these are the two cases when beta is infinity or R l is infinity, your gain will approach one. Okay. So there is other way of deriving this gain expressions as well. So this is we have seen one rather two forms of writing the gain expression. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is uh, this is an expression for gain in terms of R in and R S. Now we will try to write the gain expression in terms of R out. So this is R S and we have applied the source voltage. So to find in terms of R out. We can find the equivalent Thevenin resistance, Thevenin, uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit seen by the load resistance R L here, and that Thevenin equivalent again I've assumed R naught is zero. I've, I have I have to find out two things. One is the Thevenin open circuit voltage, okay, and the uh, impedance seen at this node. The open circuit voltage will sim simply be equal to V S itself because once you open circuit this node, the emitter current is zero. Since the emitter current is zero, the base current is also zero. The voltage drop across R S is zero. So you will actually have Vs appearing at the base, and since base emitter voltage Vbe will also be zero because your emitter current is zero, Vb has to be small signal Vbe has to be zero. So emitter voltage will directly follow the base voltage. So it will be V naught will also be Vs. So the Thevenin voltage will actually be, uh, let me just write it as a voltage source, will just be Vs itself. The output resistance on the other hand, we saw how to calculate it, calculate it in the last class. So we'll have to short circuit your input. And find the equivalent resistance seen at the emitter. So when you do that, you are going to get a certain R out. Again, the value of R out, just to recall, it's R s plus R pi upon beta plus one. Okay. Now this R out comes in. Uh, this R out. Again, uh, this R out and V s together, we model it as a Thevenin resistance, Thevenin equivalent circuit. And when we connect it across the load, the load voltage is going to be R L by R L plus R out into V S. So here, if you see, R out actually captures the effect of R S here. The expression for R S, R out actually captures this. So that's how you get the expression. Now, if you see, look at this expression. This expression for the gain. Uh, if I remove V S, I get the gain. This expression for the gain is only in terms of R L and R out. There is no R S present in this expression. The other expression we saw in terms of R n was R n minus R pi by R n plus R s. So here in this expression, if you see, there is no mention of R l. Explicitly, there is no mention of R l, but you should know that R n depends is a strong function of the load resistance. Similarly, the output resistance here is a strong function of the source resistance, and we saw that expression for it. It's given here, R s plus R pi by beta plus one. Okay. Now. Again, uh, just for the sake of completion, I'll write this expression in more generic terms. So now we have done it for R not equal to infinity case, which is your uh, V A equals infinity, okay? Or R not equal to infinity case, we have derived it. Now what happens when R not is finite? When R not is finite, Okay, when R not is finite, of course, uh, what you can do is all the analysis that we have done so far, you can just club it with R L and simply uh, substitute R L as R L R L parallel R not, and you will get the same answers. Okay, 
I mean, wherever you have RL, you have to just substitute RL plus RL parallel or not, and that will sufficient. That will suffice for the analysis. Now you should know that because RL parallel R R not is slightly going to be smaller value, every the gain value is going to be slightly reduced in the presence of R not. Okay. Now we will try and analyze the circuit in the presence of R not. Okay. So uh, to analyze the circuit, uh, what I will do is. I'll just use this uh, expression for. We can we can actually solve this problem in in many in many different ways. But first, uh, the conventional way, the most conventional way, will be to uh, to find the gain from say V S to the base input, to the base input, and then from this point to this point, we can find gain that way as well. Okay, if R L is infinity, I have made the load resistance as infinity, and there is only R not present. Then, your input resistance, we discussed in the previous lecture, the maximum value will simply be approximately. In fact, it will be R pi plus beta plus one into R not. That will be your input resistance, which is approximately beta R not. We discussed that this is like a maximum upper limit of resistance input input impedance that we can get in a in a single BJT. <laughs> And similarly, this will also be the maximum value that you will get it as the output resistance when you look into the collector terminal of a BJT. Okay, so uh, we discuss that again. We will dis probably discuss this again when we go to cascode configurations. Okay, and uh, so now we know the input voltage. The input voltage is going to be R in by R in plus R S. That's the voltage at the base terminal times V S, of course. Now, from here to here, from base to emitter, we can again do the analysis that we have done in the last class. I'll uh, we can represent it by the Thevenin equivalent and all that, and we'll the result we'll get is R naught by R naught plus R e. So this is the factor which captures the effect of okay R naught here. Now, I can actually this circuit. So this is the output voltage. I I can now say that. This entire circuit. If when I connect R L to this circuit, I can say that the open circuit voltage. I have to now. I I can try and find the Thevenin equivalent or the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit as seen by the load resistance in the presence of R naught. Okay. Previously, when R naught was infinity, this was simply infinity. We didn't have to model this part. Okay. And this term was also just one. Okay. But now, because of the presence of R naught. Your R N is finite, and you get this expression. So this is the expression you get. Now this is the Thevenin voltage seen across the load resistance in the presence of R naught. Now this will be your V T H. The output resistance is going to be the resistance that you will see into the emitter terminal, okay? And that value, the output resistance value, is going to be again. If you recall R out, whatever the previous value of R out is, which is R out is R S plus R pi upon beta plus one. This whole thing should be in parallel with R not. That will be your new output resistance, and this will come in parallel. Uh, this this will be this can be now connected to R L. So this is this will be your whole expression for. Uh, I mean this will be your equivalent Thevenin circuit in the presence of R not. Okay, as seen by R L. So the gain expression will in that case be R N by R n plus R s, okay. This models the loss at the input because of the finite input impedance. Next is R not by R not plus R e. This is your unloaded gain. This is in the presence of R not. This is your unloaded gain, and this is the maximum gain you can get out of this common collector configuration, okay. In the presence of R not. And the third term will be R l by R l plus R out parallel R not. Okay, so this will be the expression for gain in the presence of R. This is a more detailed expression. <laughs> okay, uh, wherein we are separating out R not from R L. As I said, if you want to solve this problem in a more simpler way, you can just club R not with R R L, and do the analysis as we did before. Say this is R S, and I want to find the voltage gain at this point. We can approach the, apply the same procedure. You can just find the current flowing. So 
in that case it will be r in minus r pi by r in in terms of i am writing this in terms of r in and r s or you can also write this expression as r l parallel r not by r l parallel r not plus r out so these are the two different expressions for the gain you will get here okay now here r in will be different your r in will not be the same as the old r in your r in in this case is going to be r pi plus r l parallel r not into beta plus 1 so this parallel r not is also going to come okay in the in in the expression for r in okay you can directly write this this way as well but i showed it here in terms of i mean separately i mean i wanted to separate r l out then you will get a slightly more complicated expression but it makes a lot of intuitive sense so this this should be the drop because of the finite input resistance and this is the intrinsic gain the sorry the unloaded gain the maximum possible gain of a common gate configuration again this can also be written as gm r not by gm r not plus alpha just to refresh your memory we derived this result in the one of the previous lectures and the third term captures the effect of the loading the output load resistance loading and reducing the gain okay so this is your overall uh, gain expression in the presence of finite r not and as i said you can also simplify the expression if you include r not in parallel with the load resistance itself okay so uh, that's it about the uh, gain the un the loaded gain of a common collector configuration of course once we start loading it the gain the maximum gain is approximately 1 um, in that is true only if r not is infinity but for a finite r not or a finite early voltage this is the value gm r not by alpha plus gm r not will be your maximum possible gain and that will be very close to 1 okay unless your intrinsic gain gm r not is very poor that value will be very close to 1 so uh, that's it about common collector configurations we saw how to find the gain in different forms the the uh, loaded gain in different forms using r in r out and also a more generic form of the gain in the presence of a uh, finite r not the next lecture i'll start with the discussion of uh, we are more or less now done with the single stage amplifiers okay the simple uh, i would say more of uh, a very very simplistic single stage that the fundamental single stage amplifiers are done now now we will slowly start adding some complexity to the single stage amplifiers so next class i'll talk about uh, uh, source degenerated mos amplifiers